Thank you for joining us. I'm John Richter, president of Friends of the Jordan River Watershed. Friends of the Jordan is a conservation and environmental group located in northwest lower Michigan. The program you're about to see is on a subject that will affect every person in Michigan and something we all need to learn a lot more about before irreparable harm is done to our homes, communities, and environment. This subject is called fracking, or more accurately, deep shale slick water hydrologic fracking. It's a new method of extracting natural gas. A couple of years ago, after watching a commercial by T. Boone Pickens announcing vast reserves of natural gas right here in America, I was encouraged. At last, I thought, here was an abundant fossil fuel that burned cleaner than coal, could end our dependence on foreign oil and provide good jobs for American workers. Then I learned about the devastating industrial scale process used to extract this natural gas, the effects it had on communities and the environment, and that it was being sold overseas. Now I'm not only discouraged, but alarmed. We have seen the environmental destruction fracking has caused in other states, and now it's come to Michigan. We think Michigan has far too much to lose by allowing this method of gas extraction to continue. But first, we, under, we need to understand how fracking works and what its true costs are. A series of videos we have prepared are segments of a two-hour presentation by Dr. Anthony Ingrafia from Cornell University. Dr. Ingrafia is a world-renowned expert on natural gas extraction and provides us with a sound scientific explanation of fracking. This video should be well worth your time to watch. You can find much more information on this subject on our website at friendsofthejordan.org or another don'tfrackmichigan.org. Thanks for watching. How big an activity is this going to be and why? We're talking quantities of gas, quantities of money, number of wells, number of pads. What impact can you expect over the next 10, 20, 30 years in Pennsylvania? In your county, you have, I think, 14 permits and two wells drilled so far. So be prepared. Uh, this year through November, uh, 1,368 Marcellus wells drilled. Is the rate increasing? Well, yes. In, in 2008, there were 195 drilled. In 2009, there were 768 drilled. By this year, we will have doubled that. And the industry articles that I read, if capital permits it and the price of gas goes back up, you'll see something like 3,000 wells per year being drilled and maybe completed in Pennsylvania. So that's the temporal impact something between two and 3,000 wells per year over the whole state. Um, <clears throat> closer to home, you've got two wells that were drilled in your county, north and west of here. Why? Why all these wells? There must be something down there the gas companies want. Sure, gas, where is it? Everywhere in the Marcellus. How do we get it? Drill as many wells as you can. How many wells can you drill? Depends upon what the lease, the, the, the people who are leasing your land say you can do, and depends upon how much capital you can bring to the job. <coughs> Average cost of drilling and completing a Marcellus well in Pennsylvania is four and a half million dollars. Okay, so if they drilled 1,300 wells this year, and each one costs four and a half million dollars, how much capital is that? We're talking billion dollars, and the companies don't have that sitting in their back pockets. That's go to Wall Street and beg. You gotta borrow to get that capital here. So somebody has to make a judgment in the front office. Are we going to make a profit? It's going to cost us $4.5 million to drill that well. We've got to go borrow that money. got to pay the interest on it. Are we going to make a profit? Depends upon how much gas we can get out of a well. Okay. So what number are we looking at here? This is the total amount of gas that was consumed, natural gas, in the United States uh, last year, 23 trillion cubic feet. So it will be worthwhile as a natural resource to continue to develop the Marcellus if we can produce 
safely enough for everybody in the room, safely enough if we can produce a, an amount, amount of gas that's significant compared to that number. Okay. All right, so how are we going to do that? Well, this guy did it. It's a colleague of mine, Terry Ann Gelder, professor at Penn State. Anybody know him? Okay. Oh, come on. My co-author. <laughs> uh, okay, I'll take it. Boo. Um, so he's the father of the Marcellus. He's written more papers and books and book chapters on Eastern Devonian shales and joint systems than anybody else. And he did an analysis, which I'm going to go through here for a minute, and show how he is able to predict, <coughs> calculate, based on modeling, not on experience, but on models, how much gas could be produced from Pennsylvania from how many wells over what period of time. And if you don't have that information and you're the CEO of Chesapeake, you're putting your shareholders at risk. You've got to be able to do those calculations. Is this going to be worthwhile from a financial point of view? From a landowner's point of view, how many people here are willing to admit that they've leased? Okay. From a landowner's point of view, you need these numbers that I'm about to show you. All right, graphs. You're all experts in graphs. Horizontal axis is age of a well. Vertical axis is the amount of gas per day being produced from that well. This is data from Chesapeake for an average Marcellus well that Chesapeake developed in Pennsylvania. This is information they sent to their shareholders. Okay. This is called a decline curve. Why do you think it's called a decline curve? It is, it is a natural characteristic of unconventional gas wells and shales to have a rapid decline in production rate. Why? You know the answer. I told you already. Because most of the gas that you can easily get is already in the cracks that you're trying to hydraulically fracture and reopen so that that gas can quickly flow back to your casing and to the surface. Thereafter, you have to wait for the gas that's trapped inside the rock to make its way to those fractures that you've propped open, and that takes time. So a lot of gas comes out the first day in the first year, but this is, end, this is day one. By the end of year one, you've reduced the rate of production by a factor of three. Okay. So, but those of you who know calculus say, well, if we fit a computer model or a mathematical model to that curve, right? It's an exponential. Yeah, remember those things? Admit it. If we integrate an exponential, we get this. This is the cumulative production, the total amount of gas that will come out of that well. <coughs> so if we extrapolate that curve, you mind, remember this, these wells are only two or three years old, so we, really don't, we only have data here. The rest of it is a guess. So we're really going to be guessing what's happening out here at year 15, year 20, year 30, year 40, year 50. But if you were willing to take those guesses, this well should produce in its lifetime <coughs> a very important number, 4.2 billion cubic feet of gas. So if you're a landowner and you leased, and you have this well on your land, the gas company should have told you at this point, they should have given you this curve and said, we expect that that well on your property will produce this many billions of cubic feet over its lifetime. If they haven't, you're an idiot. <laughs> you didn't ask. You should have. It's your right to know. It's how they're basing their, their, their profit picture. They should be using that, giving you that information so you can make an informed decision as to whether it's worthwhile from a financial health and hazard point of view for you to take the money. Okay, 4.2 billion cubic feet. How much is that worth? About 16 billion of current gas prices. 16 million dollars at current gas prices, roughly $4.25 per thousand cubic feet. So that well if this model is correct and using current prices would produce $16 million worth of gas over its lifetime. But, as I said before, it costs $4.5 million to drill the well. Take that off the top. Now you're down to $12 million. There's $1.28 per thousand finding costs. That's all the cost that leads up to your getting to the well, drilling the well, producing the well. Then there's processing costs because you've got to dehumidify the gas. And if you're in southwestern Pennsylvania, you've got to get all the other crud out of the gas. So that's another 5, 10, 15, 20 cents per thousand cubic feet. And guess what? You have to pay royalties and bonuses to the people who own the land on this, in which this gas well sits. So if you're paying a 20% royalty on, gee, are you paying 20% on 12 million or are you paying 20% on 12 million after 300% of recovery costs? What's your, what does your lease say? 
are all leases the same? <laughs> have you negotiated a good lease? Should you have had this information in front of you when you negotiated your lease? Did the company give you this information? Maybe, maybe not. Okay, the point is, at $4 a thousand cubic feet, they're still gonna make some money on this well, if all this modeling is correct. It's a model, it's not reality. The oldest producing Marcellus well in the, in the state of Pennsylvania is about right here. Everything after that is pure speculation. So be careful. All right, so how much, how, if, if each well were to produce something like 4.2 billion cubic feet over its lifetime, how many wells would it take to get, say, 70% of the gas out of Pennsylvania? And then how much would it be worth? Those are all very easy calculations to do once you have those numbers. So let me show you the numbers. Professor Engelder did this. Pennsylvania, 25 counties overlying the Marcellus, <coughs> 21,000 square miles. <coughs> Uh, all good engineers and scientists like Professor Engelder will never say anything is true. They always talk in terms of probabilities. So this P means, P50 means there's a 50% probability that I'm right. There's a 50% probability I'm wrong. 50-50. He says there's a 50% probability that my model says that over five years, those 25 counties would produce 89 trillion cubic feet of natural gas which is three times the U.S. consumption per year. So in five years, Pennsylvania could conceivably produce three years of natural, of natural gas supply for the entire United States if the model's correct. But you have to read the fine print, too. Fine print's important. For these numbers to be used, you have to read the fine print, which says this assumes that 70% of every square mile in each of these counties gets drilled and each square mile gets drilled with eight wells. Remember the picture of the Dallas-Fort Worth airport? Okay, so if you want that much gas, you gotta drill 20,000 times 0.7 is 14,000 times eight. Eight times 14 is 112,000 wells in five years. Can Pennsylvania drill 112,000 wells in five years? I just showed you data. They can barely get 2,000 wells per year. So what's the probability that in five years, Pennsylvania can solve the nation's natural gas problem? No. <coughs> Another myth. I'm not saying the gas isn't there. What I'm talking about now is temporal intensity. You can't get that much gas out in that period of time because there's not enough capital in the world to bring enough big rigs and frack jobs to the state of Pennsylvania, and there aren't enough intelligent, educated, well record, well well workers to drill 112,000 wells in five years, okay? So these are interesting numbers, but you gotta take them with a grain of salt, thank you. You can project 50 years, and no one knows if the Marcellus well will produce for 50 years. The oldest Marcellus well is four and a half years old. So maybe they'll produce economically for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, we don't know. But if you take the model of Professor Engelder, over 50 years, Pennsylvania, now with all 42 counties producing 32,000 square miles multiplied by 0 0.8, 0 by 0 0.7, uh, seven times point, that's the, uh, 21,000, 21,000 times eight, it's uh, 170,000 wells, okay? So over 50 years, can Pennsylvania drill 170,000 wells? Yeah, that's what, 2,000, 2,500 wells per year. You're almost at that rate now. So it would take 50 years to drill that many wells, and then there's a 50% probability that over 50 years you would produce 300 trillion cubic feet of gas if you drill 70% of each county at eight wells per square mile. So now you're talking 10 years supply, 15 years supply of the United States over a 50 year period. Not negligible, but be careful about the hyperbole and the advertisements that we're gonna solve the Mideast war crisis and we're gonna be totally energy independent All right, what's it gonna look like around here in 50 years? It's not gonna look like that. This is not an unconventional shale gas development. It really bothers me when people show this picture and say, here's New York State in 20 years, or Pennsylvania in 20 years. It's not gonna look like that. This is 40 acre spacing, which is necessary for the geology in tight gas sands. This is not shale, this is Wyoming. This is closer. This is shale. This is the Barnett area. This is northwest of Dallas-Fort Worth. Dallas-Fort Worth is right here. The airport is right here. Um, 
Cowboy Stadium is about right here, and there are gas wells being drilled under Cowboy Stadium right now by Jerry Jones. Those of you who are professional football, don't worry about him having enough money to pay his players. I never worry about Jerry Jones being broke. <coughs> All right, this started out as 40 acre spacing, went up to 80 acre spacing as they were experimenting in the Barnett from the early 1990s to early in this century. They were exploring and they were realizing they can go to longer laterals. Longer laterals means longer spacing between pads. Fewer pads, more wells per pad, bigger spacing. Okay. So this is closer to what's actually happening in Pennsylvania. Okay. The idea here is one pad, multiple wells, make sure the wells are going perpendicular to the major joint sets. So the geology tells you which direction to go. You always have some of the wells going one direction, the rest of the wells going the opposite direction. And the orientation of that is dictated by the orientation of the joints that are down there. And here are actual maps taken from applications for permits in New York State. So this is again Chesapeake Company asks the New York State DEC, your version of DEP, we want the right to declare this to be what's called a spacing unit. That's an area that is agreed upon by three parties. The operator, the gas operator, the New York State DEC, and the landowners who control 60% of the land in that area. In New York State, the law is currently, if you can get the people who own 60% of the land in a spacing unit, then that spacing unit can be agreed upon by the state and the operator as an area in which wells can be drilled. The other 40% of the people don't have to agree. That's called compulsory integration. It's written into the Bill of Rights. <laughs> the Bill of Oil and Gas Rights. Uh, anyway, so the idea here is they would put a pad right here and in this case, they wanted to drill five wells north, north, east, north, northwest, five wells south, southeast, and that's the way it would work. <clears throat> and if this were a situation where Chesapeake would control large areas and they had no competition, and 60% of the land was controlled by landowners who really wanted to work with that company, then they would put another spacing unit here, and another spacing unit here, and another one here, and it would look like that. That's the ideal. That's just like the Dallas-Fort Worth Airport. Each one of those red squares would be a pad, and we'd have wells going. This would be the area around New York, where, near where I live, where all the permits are for wells going north, northwest, south, southeast. Whether that's going to happen or not depends upon you, people on the land. If they don't agree to that, then it can't happen. Uh, this is a recent study that you should all go read. It's done by the Nature Conservancy in collaboration with the state of Pennsylvania, DEP, and in collaboration with a large number of gas operators. They got everybody around the table and said, let's do our best at forecasting high, medium, and low. What might Pennsylvania look like in 30 years? So go read that report. It's online, publicly available. This is what they predict under medium development, 10,000 well pads in Pennsylvania in 20 years with an average of six wells per pad. Okay, that's what they call their medium scenario. The high scenario is a lot more wells and a lot more pads, but this is what the pad distribution would look like in southern Susquehanna County and northern Wyoming County. Each one of those would be a pad. Okay, so that's a prediction made by industry people working in collaboration with your DEP and the Nature Conservancy to try to give you a, a view of what things would look like. <coughs> 